guys, so here we are in part 5, and in this section we're going to start cracking on the cups down at the bottom here, as well as probably the front panels and possibly some of the tank at the back here if we have time. Uh, but let's worry about that later, we'll do the cup stand first. Okay, let's take another look at our reference images here. And as I mentioned last time, you know, this is pretty simple. Uh, it virtually has no detail on the outside that you can uh, see. Okay, so we're going to start with the outer piece here and then we'll, you know, create this inner piece as well as this grate and this tab. Um, now you can see the only thing we really have on the front section or the outer part is this little uh, cutout here where this tab sits in when it slides down. Uh, so let's start making this first and again it'll be pretty simple for us to do. Let's just minimize that for a second. And let's grab the tray here and let's hide everything else. So hide on select it. Let's also get rid of those grids there. And let's go into the top view here. Alright, we're just going to start with a uh, cylinder. So let's go over to the crate panel, grab a cylinder. Let's draw that out in the center. And we want this to be just slightly smaller in radius than that cup uh, stand at the bottom there. Let's do something like that. We'll get some height here. And we'll also uh, just set it down into position. Let's also turn off this realistic shading. Don't need that. And let's pull this down to the bottom here and just set it right on there. Okay, so let's maybe up the sides here. Let's also get rid of these height settings. We don't need those right now, so let's take those off by right-clicking on the spinner. And that looks a little too short, so let's take up the height a little bit more. Uh, we'll do about 250 for now. We can adjust it later if we need to. Okay, we also want to crank up the sides on here. Um, if you look at the reference here, where this little cutout is, uh, this little notch where this sits in, um, we want to make sure we have enough sides on the cylinder so that we can kind of just um, pull the verts down here to create this rather than you know trying to actually cut that in. Uh, it's really not necessary to cut it in. Um, if we crank this up to say maybe like 60 on the sides, let's maybe go a little higher. Let's even do like 80. Okay, that's a ton of sides, but it, um, it should make this a lot easier uh, than it would if we you know dial it down to like 30. Okay, let's also add a cap segment here for a second. Okay, and I think that should work fine. All right, so let's right click and we'll convert to stable poly. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just create the uh, lip here going around. So let's go to edge, grab this edge here. Let's do a loop on that and go up to scale. I'm just gonna scale it out. And we want it pretty close to the outside. Let's do maybe something like that. Okay, and then we'll just go to vertex here, select this center vertex, hold down control, click on polygon, that'll give us a polygon selection on the top there, and now we can just extrude this in. Okay, so I'm just going to extrude it up like that, hit OK, then we'll go to the move tool, into the right view here, let's hit F3 to go to wireframe, and we're just going to pull this right down into the side, and we'll park it down at the bottom, something like that. Okay, now I'm just going to um, leave the bottom polygons on this piece. Um, I mentioned at the end of the fourth section that uh, we weren't going to do, you know, the threads or anything on the inside here uh, that we have in this picture. Uh, we really don't need to put this detail in here, and we're not going to see any of that stuff on the final render. So I'm just going to skip that out. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, maybe add some support edges here so we can smooth this out. All right, so with those polygons select, let's do another inset here. And uh, let's just do it pretty tight. I'm just going to take that up a little bit more. Round two, hit OK. And we want to have kind of a little bit of a bevel on this top uh, lip here. Uh, you could do that by just selecting the two edges and uh, doing a chamfer, but we could also do it by just ringing these top edges here, doing connect, and let's do maybe like four segments with no pinch, no slide, and hit OK. And with those selected, I'm just going to go to the left view here, zoom in a bit on the top, and we'll just pull these up a bit. Okay, like that. Just slightly. Make sure you have your edge constraint turned off when you do that. Okay, now we'll zoom in and we'll just grab the two center ones and loop them. And we'll just move those up a little bit more. Okay, that's going to give us you know, a pretty nice round top here on the edge. Let's bring it up a little bit more. Okay, let me just change this color here. I'm just going to put black on there and let's chuck one of our materials on. Let's do the blue. Okay, and for the bottom here, uh, we want this to be pretty sharp. Let's just uh, hit F3 here for a second so we can see it. And that's not going to help much. Let's hit Alt Q. Okay, and then we'll just go in here 
select an edge on the outside bottom there and loop it. And for this we can just do a chamfer. Alright, so let's open up chamfer. Let's do maybe like three segments. We'll just take that up a little bit more to roll it over. Uh, we don't want it to be, you know, super sharp. Let's do maybe around two or so. Okay, and that'll just allow us to catch a little bit of shadow um, around the base of this piece when it sits on top of the other one. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of these selection brackets as well. Let's just go up here, down to configure, turn off selection brackets, hit OK. Now let's create the notch here. So let's go into vertex. Go back to our right view here. And I'm just going to select this in this view and then we can rotate the piece around later on. So we got the center edge right here. So let's grab these verts right over on the right side of it. And we want to have this kind of tapering down. So let's just grab a couple of these rows. Let's do maybe like six rows. Let's see if that's enough. Let's go one more here. Okay, and we only do, want to do this on one side, so I'm just going to deselect the verts over here holding down Alt. Okay, so we have these ones selected. And let's just switch this quickly to the left view. Okay, we're just going to pull this down and kind of, you know, uh, create this little bit of a lip here. Alright, so let's bring this down. We're going to bring it down quite far. Maybe something like that. Okay, we'll adjust this in a minute, but let's just hold down Alt and deselect these ones here on the corner. So we have these five selected. And we're just going to kind of manually taper this up to the uh, top here. Alright, so I'm just going to move it up a bit, deselect a pair, a little bit more. And let's we'll keep working our way over to the side here. Okay, we don't want to do too um, steep. We want to have it kind of tapering out. Alright, so let's try to get a nice line on there. Okay, and for this last part here, we'll just bring it up. And we'll have it. Uh, maybe just slightly lower than the top ones in the back there. Okay, that's going to give us kind of like a, a rolling taper over the side there, or over the corner. Okay, and now that we pulled that down with this top uh, shape like this, you can see that's going to be kind of whacked out, and these verts here need to be pushed forward a little bit. Uh, same with the bottom ones at the side here. Okay, so we can do that by just grabbing these verts here. I'm just going to grab one, hit Z so we can zoom in on it. And we'll just select the four verts here. Okay, we'll go back into the left view. Okay, we have one selected down at the bottom here, so I'm just going to deselect those. All right, so we only got the uh, four here selected. Just make sure we get that one there. And you can always check and see how many verts you have selected over here in the modified panel. Okay, so let's turn on our shading with F3. And we're just going to push this over a little bit. Okay, okay go to wireframe, deselect these two bottom ones and just move these over a little bit more okay just so we have a nice angle on that edge and we'll do the exact same thing up here at the top all right so back in perspective here let's grab these four again and we'll just slightly move those forward okay and then deselect the bottom two and just move the top two a little bit more forward okay so the edge is more even and continuous around this whole shape Okay, and let's maybe add a couple of additional segments here uh, just to help this smooth out. We have some really long polygons here, so I'm just going to do a ring on the inside and outside. Connect that up, we'll do uh, maybe about four segments again with no pinch, no slide, and OK. Alright, so let's test smooth this with a turbo smooth, two iterations, ice line, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, and that looks pretty good. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is create the inner piece, uh, this piece here. And you can see it has some little tabs on the top here. Um, I didn't actually put those on my original model and I don't know if we really need to do it here or not. Uh, let's just get the shape in there first and then we'll worry about that. Okay, so let's go back into the top view here. Let's grab another cylinder, draw that out. Okay, you want this to be slightly smaller in radius. Give it a little bit of height there. And just to make sure everything's lined up, I'm just going to align this to the original piece on XYZ. Okay, and we'll go into our side view here. We want this to be sticking up a little bit above the original uh, edge there. Okay, and we'll just play with the radius a little bit more here. Let's take it up slightly. Okay, we don't want it to be super tight. Uh, I want to have a bit of a gap in there. It's not really a tight fit, so let's take that down a little bit more. Something like that is probably fine. And 
And again, you know, we can adjust that later on. Uh, for this piece, we don't have uh, that detail in there, so we don't need this many edges. Let's take this back down to maybe like 40. Okay, and we really don't even need that uh, center cap there, so let's take those off as well. All right, now we can convert this to Edible Poly. Let's go over to Polygon. Let's go into Wireframe. We're going to grab the top and bottom polygons. And actually, let's just grab the top one for now. We'll do the bottom one separately. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just inset this. Okay, I'm just going to take that up a bit. Get sort of the same thickness on the edge. Like that, and let's hit OK to that. Let's go over to Extrude. Let's just extrude this down a little bit. Okay, we just want to create a void where that uh, grading piece can sit on top here. Maybe something like that. And we'll do another inset here. That's pretty good. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to go down to, to the bottom here, hit F3 to go into wireframe. Select that bottom polygon. Go into our top view here. We'll zoom in and we'll inset this one until we match it up with this edge here. Okay, so let's take that up like that. About 10 or so, and OK. And with that bottom polygon select, I'm just going to hold Control and select this one, and then we'll hit Bridge. Okay, so we can cut that right through. All right, so now I'll just add some supporting edges here. And again, we'll add a little bit of a, a bevel on the top edge here. So let's ring this edge. Let's connect that up. Now uh, let's just do four again, and we'll do the same process uh, with this piece. So let's bring these up just a bit. Grab the middle two, loop them, and let's bring those up a little bit more, like that. And let's also maybe add some here. So let's grab this edge and bring it, connect it up. And for this one, we only want two. We'll keep it flat, so we'll just pinch these out to uh, harden up the corners a little bit more. Okay, and same thing here on the side. Another ring, another connect, two segments, like so. And on the bottom, let's do that as well. So let's grab a bottom edge here, another ring, another connect. And we'll just do that the same. Okay, so let's just get out of edge here, hit exit isolation mode. Just reselect the inner piece there and hit Alt Q again. So we have the one piece. And let's just maybe support the other shape here. So I'm going to bring the outside edges, connect that up with two segments, and let's just take that up a little bit. Now I want that pretty tight. Okay, so about 98, we'll do the same thing on the inside. Ring it and connect. Let's take that down maybe a little bit. Okay, and finally we'll just add a couple of extra loops here to break up these long polygons. All right, so let's do a ring on the inner and outer edges. And we'll give that maybe like three and okay. All right, so let's turbo smooth it and see how it looks. Okay. And we'll exit isolation mode here. Let's also change the color of this piece to uh, black and we'll throw that blue shader on there. Okay, we might need to adjust the height a little bit later on, but uh, let's get the grading piece in there first. 